After the end of World War II, a number of Nazi criminals who were senior officials fled to South America. They did so with the help of what they called Rat Lines, a route organized by the representatives of the clergy. The Catholic Church at the time was hostile to communism and liberalism, which were considered the greatest threats to the Christian world. Therefore, some number of the clergy of almost all ranks willingly helped the Nazis as enemies of their enemies. The Nazis' escape routes from Europe ran mainly through Spain, Norway, and Italy to countries in Latin America or the Middle East. 90% of the Nazis who escaped did so with the help of the Holy See. The Vatican at the time acted as a passport service for Nazi criminals. Overall, by 1951, about 120,000 documents had been issued to the former German military. The Nazis used stolen or forged documents. The United Kingdom alone, together with Canada, hosted about 8,000 former SS men with false documents. Of all the Latin American countries, Argentina became the perfect hiding place for fugitives. Argentina's right-wing dictator, Juan Perón, made no secret of his positive attitude towards Nazism. In addition, former German agent Ludwig Freude became the head of Argentine intelligence at the time. Also, Cardinal Antonio Caggiano gave full support to the Nazi fugitives from justice. During almost the entire war, the country remained neutral. However, this neutrality was specific. There were branches of German arms manufacturing companies on the territory of the Latin American state. The German embassy in Buenos Aires housed divisions of two banks of the Third Reich. Argentine companies supplied Italy and Germany with chemicals, palladium, platinum, medicines, famous Argentine meat, and wheat. The authorities of Argentina did not refuse to park German submarines off their coast. By the outbreak of World War II in Argentina, 13 million, or 4%, of the population was of German descent. Pro-Nazi views were popular among these residents. Thus, Argentina created a propitious environment for the maturation of Nazi sentiments for the warm acceptance of German war criminals. The most famous Nazi who disappeared in Argentina was definitely Adolf Eichmann. This Obersturmbannführer of the SS headed a special department of the Gestapo responsible for the final solution of the Jewish question and was also involved in the extermination of six million Jews, Roma, and other discriminated peoples. Eichmann was able to be issued an Argentine passport in the name of Richard Clement by means of the Catholic clergy. After that, he was legalized in Argentina, where he spent 10 years. During this time, Eichmann even managed to get his family out of Germany. He arrived in Germany with a new Argentine passport and remarried his wife as another person, with the aim of further joint departure to Argentina. The measured life of the Nazi in Buenos Aires was interrupted by Israeli intelligence Mossad, which managed to track down the Nazi and kidnap him directly from the Argentine capital. Thanks to a brilliant special operation, Eichmann was taken to Israel, where he was sentenced to death by hanging for numerous crimes against humanity. Erich Priebke safely lived in Argentina for half a century. He served as SS Hauptsturmführer, responsible for the murders of communists and Jews in Italy. During the massacre in the Ardiatine Caves, 335 Italians were killed by the Nazis under the command of this person. However, after the end of World War II, Erich managed to escape from the British POW camp. Priebke made it to Argentina, where he found refuge. Italian authorities managed to bring Priebke to justice only in 1996. For a long time, Eduard Rochmann lived in Argentina. He was commandant of the infamous Riga Ghetto and concentration camp Riga Kaiserwald. Rochmann was held in a prisoner of war camp by the Allies, but was later released. In 1947, he was rearrested by the British military police in Graz, but Rochmann managed to escape. With the help of the Red Cross, Rochmann obtained documents in the name of Federico Wegener and fled to Argentina. There, he went into business, traded in wood, and then obtained Argentine citizenship. However, the search for Rochmann in Europe continued 
and the Argentine authorities were forced to issue a warrant for his arrest. He then fled to Paraguay, where he died shortly afterward. Sadistic physician Joseph Mengele, who worked at the Auschwitz concentration camp, also took advantage of the possibility of escape. He reached South Tyrol, where supporters gave him a new passport in the name of Helmut Greger, and subsequently moved to Argentina. Frightened by the kidnapping of Eichmann, Joseph Mengele, a former medical captain and a doctor at the concentration camp Auschwitz, fled to Paraguay. However, Mengele did not remain there and moved to Brazil, where he died of a stroke while swimming at sea. The inventor of mobile gas chambers, the so-called Gaswagen, Walter Ralph, responsible for at least 97,000 murders, also escaped with the help of the rat lines. He, along with his wife and children, fled to the Ecuadorian city of Quito and then traveled to Chile, where he became a wealthy businessman and died of a heart attack in 1984. For a long time, a theory about the escape to Argentina or Paraguay of one of the most important bosses of the Third Reich, Martin Bormann, was distributed in the media. Martin Bormann disappeared without a trace on the days of the Battle of Berlin, and his body was never found. This led many historians and journalists to accept Bormann's possible flight to Latin America. The ease with which the Nazis were transported to Argentina led many people to believe that the leader of Nazi Germany, Adolf Hitler, had also found his last refuge there. After the end of World War II, a huge number of Nazi war criminals were sent to the New World, to South America, where they found refuge and a more or less quiet life. The Latin American states, primarily Paraguay, Argentina, Chile, Brazil, and Bolivia, hosted Nazi criminals without hesitation. The influence of German diasporas in Latin America and the anti-communist stance of Latin American military dictators contributed to this.